There are mistakes that you're making with your YouTube channel that are costing you growth, they're costing you deeper connections with your audience, and all of the other opportunities that come with being a content creator on YouTube. And if you just made a few changes to fix some of the mistakes, it could make a significant impact on the performance of your channel as a whole. So we're gonna talk about what some of those things are, and for this, I'm gonna throw some of you under the bus. But with permission, of course, because I made this community post where I said that I'm working on a video about ways to improve your channel and to comment if it would be okay for me to reference something on your channel to highlight as something that you're doing awesome or to point out as something that you can improve. So grab your notepad because we're starting right now. And if this is your first time here, my name is Nick. And if you wanna learn how to grow your channel, make videos and learn how to use the tools that make content creation a little bit easier, start now by subscribing so you don't miss any videos that can help you. The first mistake is a combination of not understanding your audience or just choosing to not niche down. So the first channel we're throwing under the bus is Gare the Bear. Now, when it comes to Gare the Bear, their whole promise up here is that they make videos for creative people. That's extremely broad right out of the gate. With that alone, it becomes challenging to understand if this video is for you or not. Now, if we scroll down and we look at the videos that have been published to the channel, we're gonna see some other things. We can see that Gare is definitely a creative person in terms of how they're putting their thumbnails together and that sort of thing. But we're gonna see how the value proposition of making content for creative people falls apart. Right here, my closet is a disaster. If you're a creative person or not, when this video shows up on your homepage on YouTube, you're not really gonna care about this person's closet that is a stranger on YouTube if you haven't interacted with the content before. So right out of the gate, they're alienating that particular audience. This one, on the other hand, makes a lot more sense. And I want you to pay close attention to my here, where it says my new camera overhead setup, because we're gonna talk about that here later in the video. But when you look at this video, this one is for that audience of creative people anything creative would be a video for creative people. Whereas we have another one here, we played disc golf in the rain. Why would creative people care about that particular video? So when you are publishing videos to your YouTube channel, it's important to think about you are making videos for a certain type of viewer that's interested in certain things. Now, those interests that they have hopefully align with yours because that makes everything you know better and easier and more fun and all that. However, when you make everything scattered like this, it makes it really difficult to grow the channel because if you look, the person that is watching a video on Mr. Beast's candy bar, why would that person care about the last minute holiday shopping? They wouldn't. Why would the person that enjoyed this disc golf video care about the overhead camera setup? Most of them wouldn't. In the same in reverse, why would the person that cares about this overhead camera setup, why would they care about what they did this year? They wouldn't. So because of that, it's really important to just get really clear on who it is that you're serving with your content so that you can come up with video ideas for those people. So that you can package those video ideas in terms of the topic, title, and thumbnail in a way that will help the people that you're trying to reach identify it's something that they care about so they can come into the video. And then you repeat that process over and over again as you grow your YouTube channel to serve that audience that you are building content for. The next mistake is talking to a big group of people instead of just talking to the person that's watching your videos. Let me show you what I mean. The channel I'm throwing under the bus here is the ATL Flippers. Now, when we start this video, I want you to pay very close attention to how he addresses his audience. What's going on, guys? I am back with another Bandit Storage Unit video. So everything was about a bunch of people. But keep in mind, when it comes to YouTube, some people will watch with their families or watch with their friends, but most people, they're watching it on their phones, they're watching it on their computers, they're watching it on their TVs, and YouTube is more of an alone experience. And even if you are watching it with a group of people, the same thing applies because for every viewer that's sitting on that sofa watching the TV, you also want to be talking directly to them as well. I mean, this is YouTube after all. <laughs> For this, all he's gotta do to fix this is drop the guys off of it and start making it singular language that he uses when he's communicating in his videos. Pretty easy. The next tip is to not end your videos in the wrong way and do things that will prevent viewers from being able to access more of your content easily. Let me show you what I mean. The channel we're throwing under the bus for this one is In the Kitchen with Mama Mel. She has 138,000 subscribers on her YouTube channel. Now, the reason I brought attention to her subscriber count is because I know that you might be a new content creator. And if you're a new content creator, I just want you to know that you can still have your channel going, everything can be going fine, even if you're not doing all of the things. But even when you're a 
established, there are things that you can do to dial things in and make it a little bit tighter so you can do even better. But check this out. I'm gonna go here to the end of her video. I'm gonna hit play. And I just think it's a kick. I appreciate you being here. I don't ever take for granted the time you spend with me. Let me know below. Okay, in that particular case, she just said, I appreciate you being here and I appreciate the time that you've spent with me. Super kind. And she comes across very friendly. I, I would like to actually just hang out in her kitchen while she makes stuff and talk to her like she sounds amazing. But when it comes to how she's ending this, she's letting people know that the video is complete before giving someone the opportunity to click on another video by having it show up on her end screen while she's saying those finalizing things. And those finalizing things help her viewers that watch her videos on a regular basis also know that the video is complete. All she has to do here is start setting up the next video, let people know that if they enjoyed this recipe, that she's got a playlist that they'll love, or she's got another video that they'll love, and move them onto that with all this extra filler that she adds at the end of the video. And once she does that, then people are gonna start clicking on her end screens more, and then she's gonna be able to multiply the views that she's getting on her channel. And another established channel is doing another thing that a lot of content creators do, especially once you start getting traction and you start having people sign up for Patreons and memberships and things like that. What I'm getting ready to show you is a very common way that people interrupt the viewer experience, which ends up costing them a lot of views. Let me show you what I mean. The channel here is Hannah the Horrible. She's got 249,000 subscribers. Now with Hannah, she's doing really great on her YouTube channel and she could do better if she implements what it is that I'm getting ready to say. At the end of her video, she does this. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks to all of our patrons, top tiers, Colin Holmes, The Deck of Cards, Michelle Valdovinos, Tom L, Little Kittle Cat, Mitchell Schaefer Meyer. Keep in mind, her video ended already, and her timestamp on this video is 52 minutes, so she still has another minute's worth of interruptive stuff before somebody can get to another video. Now, the thing she's messing up here is that she is putting this big, long thing in between people clicking on the next video. It's really cool for the people that are members, but for everybody else, for 200,000 people that interacted with this video, they don't care about that. And because of that, I guarantee you that this video took a hit in performance because out of those 200,000 people that watched this video, some of those people would have went on to watch additional content. This video could have been credited for some of that additional content that she watched, which then ends up causing this video to get recommended more because it's responsible for more watch time and session time. So what you wanna do in this situation is you want to remove anything that's going to prevent somebody from seeing those end screens on your video and you want to build up that next click by telling people what it is that that particular video or playlist is gonna be about and why it should matter to them based on their interest in watching the video that they're currently watching. Next is when you have something that works well on your channel, not digging in and trying to understand why it worked and then trying to repeat the things that you think might have made it work in the first place. Let me show you what I mean. The channel I'm throwing under the bus in this one is playing the mom game. Now she makes really good content on her YouTube channel and her presentation is great, you know, all of that stuff. But when it comes to a big glaring mistake that I found on her channel when I pulled it up, she has a video here that has 90,000 views on it that she published two months ago. It's about an Amazon lounge haul. Now, one of the things that she did not do is you can see the exact layout of this particular thumbnail. She has big bold text right here that says Amazon Lounge Hall, and then she has all these cutouts of all these different lounge outfits. Now, she sort of did it up here where she did the same thing with the sweatsuits, but then she structured it differently. And then up here, it's kind of the same, but also a little bit of a different structure. So the very first thing that she should have done is when she's doing those other thumbnails on the similar topic, she should try to replicate this thumbnail because this grabbed people's attention and whatever she did here with the packaging was attractive to her audience and they clicked on it and they came in and they enjoyed this video. So the very first thing is that. The second thing is the theme. Now, when it comes to the theme here, she's doing huge loungewear sets, try on haul and review from Amazon. So. In this particular one, she modified that here, you know, Amazon loungewear. So she modified the structure of the title. Once we come up here, she did the same exact thing. What she should do if she's gonna be thematic is say, okay, huge, uh, what are these sweatsuits? So what she should have done is she should have said huge sweatsuit sets, try on haul and review from Amazon. And the reason for that is because that's what worked previously. So she should at least try. 
Now, let me go into this a lot deeper. We're gonna go to the video and we're gonna see exactly second by second what she doing, what she's saying when this whole thing starts. Ready? Here we go. I bought a whole bunch of matching lounge sets from Amazon. I'm going to try them on for you today and see if we can find one that's just really fantastic so you can get rid of all of your other loungy clothes. I'm also not suggesting at all that you buy all of these. I don't even know if there's any good ones. I'm a big fan of having minimal wardrobes. Okay, so again, super fun presentation. Like she's doing great there. But if you look at this, and I've done this already, if you look at how she has set up that video and the things that she's saying around that video, if you look at the other videos, you can see that she does it differently. Amazon has been busy delivering sweatsuits to my front door. I bought 12 of them and we're gonna try them on today and see if there's- There's nuance there, right? So she has this little setup and then she goes back into that particular part. It's kind of like she started the other one, but she started it a little bit differently here in this one. So what you wanna do here is you want to repeat success when you get it. So in her particular case with this lounge hall video, what she should have done is she should have said, okay, this video got 90,000 views in two months. How did I start this video? What did I say exactly when it started? How long did it take me to get into the content itself? What was I using for the thumbnail? How did I actually structure it? How did I structure my title? And she should try to replicate some of those things that have already been proven to work and already proven to get a response on her channel. Next on the list is fix your audio. I went through every single channel that said that I could look at their channel and that I could use information in their channel. And there's a lot of people that have really bad audio. If you wanna check to see if you have bad audio, here's what you wanna do. Play your video and then immediately play a video of one of the top people in your niche. If there's a drastic difference in what everything sounds like, then you probably need to work on your audio. The trick to having good audio is to get your microphone as close to you as you possibly can. For me right now, this microphone, if I put a hang loose sign and I put it on my forehead, I can touch my microphone right here. So get it off your camera, get it as close to you as you can. If you have to, you can get a Boya BYM1 microphone, they're like 15 bucks, and that will clip right to your shirt and you can have a microphone really close to you that way. But audio is half of the video experience and if you find that you do need to work on your audio, then prioritize that because it's really, really important and people will abandon your videos if your audio is not good. Next is keeping irrelevant content on your channel. Now look, you don't wanna go and delete a bunch of stuff off of your YouTube channel if it's something that people that are currently watching the channel based on the topics and things that you talk about, if it's something that they could enjoy, then you wanna leave it on the channel. However, if it's something that is completely different, you wanna consider unlisting it, and here's why. I went to the Car Advisor Classics YouTube channel, and as soon as I landed on the homepage, YouTube's For You section, which is now on all of our homepages, unless you turn it off, it's recommending me content that I don't care about. Now, if I was somebody that clicked on one of his videos and I was watching one of his car videos, it's possible that YouTube might change exactly what it is that it's showing me in that For You section, but the fact that I clicked on the channel name from my channel and I landed on his homepage, if I was somebody that was interested in cars be, and I clicked on that because somebody shared it out on social media, then in that particular case, I would have been presented front and center with videos that are not related to cars in any way, shape or form. So this one kind of falls back into that number one spot about making sure that you understand your audience and the people that you're trying to serve so that you can make sure that all of the content on your channel or at least most of it is a perfect fit for those people. Next on the list is making content that's too narrow within your niche. So when it comes to having a niche on YouTube, it's really important and the whole idea of having a niche is that your whole entire channel is a resource of content for people that care about that type of content. That's the idea. But there's also a downside of going too narrow within your niche. Let me show you what I mean. The channel I'm throwing under the bus for this one is Camp Brood. Now when it comes to Camp Brood, they're building family ties in the great outdoors. So pretty cool value proposition there. But one of the things Things that you can see here is when they talk about general audience stuff within their niche, just broader topics within the niche, they perform better. So here you have six new ways to get kicked out of a campground in 2024, right? So anybody that's camping or RVing or anything, if you're staying in a campground or considering it, this video might matter to you. Here, eight reasons everyone is selling their RV, should you. So this is another one where it's more broad. Anybody that has an RV, anybody that's considering getting an RV is a good candidate for this particular video. And technically, even people that don't like people with RVs, because then they can be like, oh yeah, see, I knew it. I knew they were gonna be selling these RVs. But if we go over to these other videos that they're making here, you can see here, these are isolated down to a very specific location. 
And for this one, they are limiting the potential reach in this. Now, of course, if it's a major tourist attraction, it's a little bit different, but there's gonna be a lot of competition for it. But when they are getting really granular here with the exact locations and they're talking about, you know, a specific trail in this particular park and things like that. Like those things can be interesting to people, but it is getting very narrow within the niche. So if it aligns with what it is they're offering on the channel, it's fine to do. But what I'm talking about is you just need to make sure that you're mindful of I have my niche that I operate in. For the topic that I'm getting ready to talk about, is this going to resonate with a very small percentage of my niche? Or is this gonna be something that anybody that's interested in what it is that I'm talking about can enjoy? When you start talking about or showing or sharing about those broader topics within your niche, then you're giving yourself the opportunity to have a wider reach with every video that you put out. And then that will help your videos also start doing better as long as you're putting the videos together well. Now, if you're watching this video and you're thinking to yourself, yeah, I should probably be doing, you know, a lot more of these things. There's also some skills that you need to develop as a YouTube content creator that will help you massively on this journey. I made an entire video showing you exactly what skills you need to develop. You can go ahead and click into that right here, right now. Go ahead and click into that and I'll see you over the next video. Thanks for watching.